Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. You made it through yet another week. A couple things to talk about. We're going to get to it real quick. Um, earlier this week, I went to uh, Elephant Trunk and uh, picked up a couple things. One of them was the Vornado Fam. We did. A lot of you enjoyed that restoration and or cleanup. And that uh, Vornado fan, I didn't, I, I had to cut out how much I paid for it because I was editing. And I paid $20 for that fan. So uh, I thought it was a, a good deal for that. I bought two items that day. One was the fan. The other one was a Holzer Cabot beautiful fire pull alarm. And uh, everything that Holzer Cabot made was just absolutely beautiful. Look at this motor that they made. Look at that. Is that not one of the most beautiful motors you've ever seen? My good friend Terry Benko from ben Benko Vintage Machine Works uh, did a, uh, a Holzer Cabot motor, and uh, he did a fantastic job. If you want to see what real Japanning looks like, I'll have a link in the description. That is real Japanning. Everybody else that tried it, you know, it's, it's just a facsimile. This is the real deal. So, um, but... What uh, today's uh, project, I'm going to be working on the fire pull box and uh, really excited to get this started. So let's get right to it. Okay, so uh, the two items that I purchased when I went to Elephant Trunk, one was the Vornado heater fan, which we just did the other day. And the second item was this vintage fire pull box. And, and now, you know, here in the city, we still have pull boxes on the corner. This is to indicate if there's a fire, you could pull down the box. Eventually, they'll be taken away. But this was an early one. And you could see here, it's kind of a rare one because you don't usually see the ones with the break glass. You see, it says uh, to break uh, glass, strike with hand. What happened was there was a little, small piece of glass in here, okay? And if you wanted to open this, if there was a fire, you would hit that down. And when you did it would release the lever here. You can see there's a little lever there that releases when you press the button and it would give you access to this lever. Now it says pull lever down once and let go. You would pull the lever down. Now, you hear that winding that's going on? That would send a code through these wires that would go to the fire alarm and it would tell what box, where this box was. You can see here, this this says 42. So that would send 42 to the uh, fire department. And then uh, they would know 42 is uh, on 127th Street and 8th Avenue. And then they would dispatch the fire department vehicles to there. Now you can see this is in rough shape, but it is cast. It's a, it's a heavy item. Uh, very collectible these are especially the ones you don't ever see the ones with the break glass so i wanted to clean this up i just want as a wall hanger see how it works what do you say we take it apart see what makes this thing work see if we can't clean it up now the first thing you'll notice is that it opens up uh, almost like an accordion here this door opens this way to give access to the lever and then this opens up this way and that'll give you access here to this back aluminum cover which we will unscrew and see what's under there now here's what i was telling you here's that <clears throat> clockwork mechanism how interesting is this first of all let's take a look at what happens here now there are four leads here probably a low current direct current would come in and when this is activated it would close the switch which would put the current here and then, remember I said this box was 42. This little cog here will push this over here until it says 42. And I'll show you when we pull the handle down. I'll do it from the back here. There goes four. And there goes two. And it will keep saying 42 as long as the... Uh, the wind that's just absolutely amazing isn't it simple and works now the first thing we'll have to do is to remove the clockwork mechanism is we have to remove the arm there's only one screw here that holds on the arm okay you can see here and because this was made mostly of brass you can see this is all brass and you can see that makes a huge difference you know as far as corrosion and getting this off so we'll pop this arm off here 
persuasion. And now we'll undo these screws in the front here. There are only three screws, one, two, and three. They're on standoffs that hold this piece on there. And then once we take this apart, then we can work on the castings. Now we have a couple pins here. This one here looks like it's uh, been uh, flanged over, which might be a little difficult to get out, but we gotta pop these pins out. I put a little 50-50 on there. We're gonna use a pin punch. Now, there are special roll pin punches that I have for here, but um, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna hit this with a wire brush just to make sure if there's any rust there. I already put some 50-50. We'll hit it with a wire brush and see if we can tap it. Now you can see what we're looking at there. You see, we hit it with the wire brush there. Now we'll take it here, we'll take this pin, see if we can just pop this out. Okay, now we tried banging this out. It's not moving from the top here. I'm gonna tell you what's happening right away. First of all, you can see here, this is a steel pin and a steel casting. That is rusted solid in there and you can work and bang and you have a possibility of cracking the casting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut here and here with a uh, uh, wafer wheel, same thing with here. We're gonna cut them, because we're gonna make new hinge pins anyway, because you can see how rusted and, you know, we'll make new hinge pins out of some rod. And that's the only thing. This way we can access the spring and everything. But that's the key. Don't try and go nuts trying to bang this with heat and everything. This is a thin casting here, and you could crack that off. You're better off just cutting it and drilling it out, in my opinion. Now, using the punch, I was able to get the one side off, but this is frozen in there. And if ever there are two tools that will save you in your career of restorations, one is the beautiful vice grip. Everybody needs a pair of vice grips. And the second one is a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. This will help you. I mean, so many times you, you, there's nothing you could do. And with this is a perfect example of using this tool. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this cutoff wheel, nice and small, thin kerf. And we're going to cut off that pin here, and then we're going to move this over and cut off the pin on the top. Now that took a total of 30 seconds. Now, you can see here that if I take a pair of pliers here, and, and try and move that, that this is in there solid. I can't even turn this. I can't even turn this. So you could see how rusted th those two pieces are in there. You never would have punched them out without possibly cracking the casting on this side. The other side, we were lucky. It did turn. Once you could turn the whole pin, you know that it will slide out. Now, if you've been doing any kind of restorations for a while, you're always going to come across problems that in the beginning were huge obstacles. But then after you've done it once or twice, it becomes you know, kind of a, a a nice challenge, an enjoyable challenge. I'll give you an example here. This piece here, this break glass little door, was uh, riveted. They had, uh, I guess uh, this was a tubular part here that when it passed through here, you could see where it passed through, then they would pound the tubes out. Now, <clears throat> I can't paint around this. I had to take this off, so I had to drill off the top parts of that so it comes off. Now, I could drill and tap this and put screws in. That'll hold that on there, brass screws. But you can see what we're dealing with. If worse came to worse, I can always make this part. That's the beauty of having a lathe, another reason why you need one. But uh, there we go. We have that piece. Another uh, little dilemma we had was this tag, number 42, which corresponds to the box here. This tag was peened on like this. There's two little copper nails there that you could see that they just get in here now um there's just two little holes and they have different tags for different models now i had to uh that's a very small hole i had no punch that small but what i always do is i always save my broken punches this one here was broken i have it in the bin you know broken and i reground it to a, a temporarily uh sharp tip that I was able to get in there and just get it to move a little bit. And then I just ground down a nail to uh, to get it to punch out even more. So that's how I was able to get that out 
without uh, destroying it. So little things like this. Sometimes you have to make a tool, but that's all the fun of it. Now, you see we have the castings down. These are beautiful castings. Now what we're going to have to do is we're just going to, uh, you know, clean them up. Same here. And the next thing we have to do, this little here, this is the aluminum housing that covers the the clockwork mechanism. And you can see it's pounded out. And that's an easy fix. Let me show you how now we fix to, that. Uh, to pop this out here, again, uh, you can see it was dented in here. The best way to do it here, you take a, a block of scrap wood you have, round off the edges. Everybody usually has an extra block of wood. Round off the edges with the belt sander or something. Then just take a, a an old towel, put it inside here, and we're going to hammer it with the soft blow hammer uh, and knock out that dent. Okay, don't try and bang too many times. Look at what you did. Now we have to go over to here. We'll that, bang that out. Okay, and you'll see you work your way around. We have to hit that corner there. Okay, corner there. And slowly but surely, you'll work out this dent, okay? Using this softened block and a towel. And eventually, you'll work this out that this is flat on the bottom. Okay, we have it now where it's pretty much domed out the way it was. Now we're going to hit this with a little Brillo, get rid of and bring this kind of back to a little bit of a shine. Okay, we're going to call this acceptable. Uh, I realize that this is going to be more than a single part episode. It's going to be a couple part episode because it's just each one of these parts takes time to do. So we did this one. We got to work on this here. Uh, this is that little release. I believe there was a piece of glass there that when you did break it, by pushing that little thing down that this would pop open and that's how you open the door. Let's clean this up. Okay, now we uh, cleaned this up. Everything is nice and lubricated now and all the, the rust is gone. You can see the springs all work fine. Now, uh, just a quick note. If When you're doing any kind of restoration, you can take it as far as you want to take it. Now, I could have taken this piece uh, removed all the pins or rivets and tore the whole thing apart and did this up and and uh, you know polished it out and everything but here's what you have to realize that um, I, guys and I was like this I used to be a real perfectionist with a lot of things and you wind up doing one restoration a year you know you have to you have to cut the line you know it's that you want it presentable you want it to be rust free you want it to be working and and you know that's where I want this to be you know so that's where you have to decide right away because I've seen so many guys start into restorations and then eventually just give up on the rest. You know, it's in a box somewhere because it's not finished because you only have so much enthusiasm per project. So if you have a project, you say, okay, that's a two or three day project max. After that, you'll, you'll lose interest and it'll sit in a box undone. Remember that. Don't spend too much time on small parts, especially ones that won't be seen. Now I scraped and wire brushed any loose paint off. Then I washed all the parts with Comet, prepped them for paint. Then I used some Rust-Oleum, Rusty Metal Primer. Goes on very thick, covered all the parts with Rusty Metal Primer. Now they'll sit on the furnace until tomorrow where they'll be ready for a top coat of our finished color. Okay, so in closing, it's uh, like I said, it's going to be a two-parter because uh, there's just too much to get done in one day. So uh, we'll see you again on Monday. I hope you have a great Easter for those celebrating Easter, and I hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.